No one foresaw that we would have hundreds, if not thousands, of great white sharks swimming around Cape Cod, swimming right off the beaches of Cape Cod, because we attempted to protect seals in 1972. They really like something with a lot of calories. And around here, that's a seal. So they, they probably don't eat much else except four seals. And that's obviously why they're here. What happens every day off Cape Cod is a natural predator-prey relationship that's been going on for millions of years. And so those white sharks out there, white sharks in general, are really, really well adapted to finding their prey, hunting their prey, and killing and eating their prey. That's what they do. The white shark is a perfect, perfect, perfect machine when it comes to attacking big prey. Typically, the shark will swim up very rapidly to a seal, grab a hold of it, shake it violently, very briefly, and then let it go. The shark does it enough so that he creates a huge bloodstream. The shark just follows the seal until the seal bleeds out and gets weak enough so that the shark can go give it a really big shake and tear it to pieces and swallow it. I've seen them from start to finish, a decent sized seal disappear in two minutes. And we're talking seals that are 300 pounds to 800 pounds. The big males are around 800, the females around 300. Between here and just the tip of that uh, cove over there, as we call it, there's a dozen great white sharks here. It's perceived that white sharks need a deep drop. They cruise at 80 to 100 feet, and they need that space, that vertical space, to get enough speed to successfully predate on a seal, which is a fast-moving target, and also to remain low and not detected. But out here, that's not at all the case. These sharks are hunting in very shallow water, and they are likely compensating for a lack of vertical space with horizontal speed. They're coming in very fast and very hot, and what it seems like from our predation studies is they're biting with a lateral snap. They're biting from the side, coming in fast and getting the seal on the side. This is entirely new to what we thought we knew about white shark predation behavior. They have learned to swim close to shore, wait for the seal or human, they don't care, and they'll attack sideways, horizontally, which is what happened to Arthur Medici, by the way. The sharks aren't here to feed on people. It's clearly a mistake made by the shark, where the shark is interpreting you know, the behavior of that human as perhaps a prey item. They're not targeting people. As a matter of fact, if they bite a person, it's generally by accident. That is not their intended target. Their intended target is, of course, seals. A boogie board with flippers does make you look more like a seal. So there is that element to it. The more and more I have dove with sharks, the more and more I realize that we are definitely not on their menu. They don't really want anything to do with us. These things are not out there coursing back and forth at the surf line looking for a surfer. If you could sit in the plane with me for a day, you'd see it. It's just like a very uh, unfortunate chance meeting. If they were really interested in eating people, there would have been a lot more attacks. The number that have happened, it's minuscule. If the guy that munched my board had any interest in me, he would have turned right around and we wouldn't be talking. Four million visitors a year to the seashore. That was the first fatality in 80 years. Look at the odds of actually getting attacked by a shark it's still really, really, really low. You'll have a greater probability of getting hurt driving to the seashore or drowning. So I think we just need to put risk in perspective. They think that the water is made for fish, so we cannot have entertainment in the water. The fish are controlling the men. As I've talked and spent time with them, the thing that comes back from Arthur's parents is that the mother and the father both say, my son was killed by a fish. 
and the fish is more important than my son. Arthur Medici's attack was something that people had anticipated would be coming. And when it finally did happen, when we finally had an interaction that was fatal, I thought, oh gosh, bad news for the sharks, bad news for the seals, because I know how people would react. Man and nature have been intersecting for a very long time. It's only recently that we've had a collision at the intersection. We've had an accident at the intersection. We made the problem by creating the Marine Mammal Protection Act, which was a very good thing and it was a sign of progress at the time. Now I think we have to recalibrate that a little bit. We have to reset our course and realize that you can't just allow the seal population to overpopulate these areas without having consequences like having too many sharks start coming in. I think most people with intelligence and common sense will realize that we all have to work together and managing the numbers is part of the solution. I think if you start shooting seals, you're gonna get a lot of people upset. If you don't shoot the seals or try to you know, thin the herd, you're gonna have a lot of people upset. Calls have actually been implemented in many areas of the world to primarily control commercial fisheries, and the results of that have, have not been met with success. Often the seal populations come back in equal or greater numbers, and I think that's what we'd see here in the U.S. because we have this constant flow of animals coming down from Canada. You know, it's just not, not wise to go out and kill things just because they're getting in our way. That's not going to happen. I also don't believe that culling all the seals will result in an immediate cessation to sharks visiting our area. And I don't think you're going to cull all the seals, so I, I'm not sure that mitigation strategies for seals are going to result in significant numbers of white sharks not visiting our area every year. I talk to people that say, oh, we should just shoot them, or we should do this, or we should do that. Well, first of all, it's illegal. We want to change an ineffective law so that we can manage the ecosystem and manage the coastal economy. That's the important thing, the coastal ecosystem, the coastal economy. At the end of 1973, the Endangered Species Act was passed, and that law does provide for delisting recovered species. Why not permit, under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, delisting species that have recovered and provide for continuing management of that species to ensure that they remain recovered.